if your idea of a great getaway is challenging conditions, isolation, raw, rugged beauty, then you're in the right place. Today I'm on a kayak camping adventure where I'll be spending the night on Ram Island here off the Bold Coast. Now this wasn't the trip I thought I was going to do. I had a completely different trip planned and a completely different part of the coast, but the weather was really tricky to predict and plan for this weekend, and I ended up canceling that trip and putting this trip right up against me needing to be back at work tomorrow morning. So we're going to see how this one goes. Uh, I appreciate you being here, and thanks for coming along for the adventure. I left out of Bucks Harbor today in Machias Port, Maine, Pettigrew Beach to be exact. It's a pretty easy all tide access spot. Pettigrew Beach is a fun place to launch from to get to Jasper Head, which is only like a half a mile or a mile from the beach. There's some fun cracks and crevices to play in if you're into that kind of thing. Our trip today took us around Jasper Head and now I'm crossing the mouth of, of Jasper Beach here as I'm making my way to Starboard Island. It's a low tide bar that extends pretty far out actually. I didn't measure it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was a half a mile, quarter mile from the mainland to the island. I'll have plenty of water to get over that bar right now. Then I'll make my way to Foster Island and then over to our, our camping destination, Ram Island. Well, part of the draw here is its wildness and ruggedness. That's also one of the challenges if you're gonna paddle here. Conditions can get big really quickly. And some of these islands don't have reliable spots you could always land. The tidal exchange up here, on average, is like 12 or 13 feet. Just a lot of water pouring in and out of things. So we get currents coming off of islands and different tide races stack up. Things try to fight to get into some of these constrictions and some of these channels. Whoa, flyby. Whew. I think that horse fly tried to get into my ear. Hey, buddy. Ah, you can see me fend off a horse fly for a little bit. All right, scared him off. He knows not to mess with me. Oh, he just came back. He didn't learn his lesson. Ah, man, he's big. I had a lovely downwind run crossing from the mouth of Jasper Beach to Starboard Island. The wind's coming from the north, northeast today and tomorrow. And it's a bit of the remnants of the system that moved through that made me change my plans this weekend. I, uh, I knew I wanted to do a kayak camping trip over this long weekend. And this was actually my first plan to come to Ram, but the weather conditions on the day I was gonna do it, Saturday to Sunday were just garbage and I didn't want to lose the opportunity since I had the time. So I planned another trip off of the west side of Mount Desert Island and got ready, went. My amazing partner, Wendy, drove me down to, uh, to the Bartlett Narrows and got there and it's just like, this is gonna be a miserable day. <laughs> this is going to be me fighting the wind all day, me not being able to get the shots I want to get, too windy for the drone, you know, hunkered in to, camp, to the tent. It was also really rainy over Saturday night into Sunday morning, which was going to be fine. I was, my, my tent was going to be cozy. I was going to be dry. But with the wind higher than I expected when I got there and the conditions looking a little grosser, uh, we came back home. So thank you, Wendy, for driving three hours round trip to go look at the ocean and decide I wasn't gonna paddle. So then I shifted the trip back to my original plan, back to Ram Island. And the window that I had to do it was uh, Monday, which is a holiday, and then getting back for my meetings tomorrow morning, back to the work life tomorrow morning on Tuesday. So I think it, it'll be fine, I've got plenty of time. Um, it'll be an early morning tomorrow, but totally worth it to come on out here. there is a blowhole that spouts off deep, deep, deep in this cavern here.
quick stop on Starboard Island to redistribute some weight. I noticed my boat was a little sluggish, so I, uh, I moved my water bag, which I normally keep in my cockpit at my feet. I moved it to right behind my seat. I could have definitely made it. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a total oh crap moment, but it was just a, a nice to fix moment. Had a nice sandy beach, so I got off and pulled it out and cleared some stuff in my day hatch and put it back close to my butt. There's a lot of, uh, lot of theories and a lot of people have beliefs on packing a kayak. I usually just try to stick to a couple of general rules about keeping the heavy weight as close to the center of the boat as possible and uh, as low in the boat as possible, favoring a little bit more weight in the back of my boat than the front of my boat. The other thing that I try, definitely try to avoid is metal right underneath my deck compass, so the, so the ferrous metal interfering with how my deck compass is going to read. Other than that, you know, there are a lot of other things that people think and feel and have and, you know, I, I tend to have most of my camping stuff and lighter stuff up in the, my, the front part of my hatch along with some, or my front hatch along with some food. That way when I get to camp, I know everything I need to set up camp is up there. I'll also stick stuff that I'm not going to get to very often or small stuff that can be away for the day. I don't need to get to it on the water uh, when I stop or for any reason. I try to get those as far forward in the, in the, in the, in the bow as possible and as far, as far back in the stern as possible and kind of pack things even around the skeg box. I even put strings on those things so that when they are way, way up in my bow, I, can, I have a string uh, on the bottom of the kayak that I can just easily yank and get that out. So that's been, uh, it's been some things that I do. What do you do? What are your kayak camping, packing tips or tricks or rules of thumb that you follow? My friend Dan has spent significantly more time exploring this coast than I have. He was on, um, he was on the board of Main Island Trail Association and knows these islands incredibly well and has paddled to them multiple times. I mean, by these islands, I mean the islands on the main island trail. There's a wealth of knowledge. And he identifies Ram Island as one of his favorite camping spots. He did an episode on paddling the blue. I'll try to leave a link to it in the description so you can go check out Dan's episode talking about the main island trail and talking about uh, Ram Island. I tend to agree with him. My knowledge base is not nearly as large as his of islands to camp on in Maine, but my goodness, this one's pretty spectacular. Welcome to Ram Island. So that is me done phase one. Phase two is figuring out how to get the camping gear up this hill because the stairs that we're here have washed away. So let's see if we can find an easy way up that doesn't erode the hillside. I don't know if we get too much up, just two Ikea bags. 
not everything, it's just the stuff I need at camp. I got all the gear I need up to the tent platform and now it's time to set up the tent. Let's try this. Well, that's me set. That's the tent and the boat and the cove we came in on. And let's go explore the island. This is the massive bit of rock that takes up the whole southern end of this island. Well, the northern end is that grass hill promontory. It's little bits of vegetation find any crack they can grow in. Hanging on. Coming up on the southwest tip of the island. Hello, tent. What the hell are you? Anybody know what this is? Seems like there's another part of it over here. Got another cemented metal pin into the rock here. So yeah, they were winching something up this way, but what the hell were they winching up? Not great for sea kayak landing. And now we're gonna explore the grassy bit of the island. I can talk to you now because I'm not worried about a broken ankle or falling into a crevasse <laughs> on that uh, rocky side of the island. So Ram Island, as the name implies, was where uh, shepherds kept rams. You can stick them on an island like this and they'll do just fine. There is a population of ram that come out on this island occasionally. There's a shepherd uh, in town who comes and, and uh, drops his uh, rams off occasionally, but I don't see any indication of them now. I think I probably would have seen something by now unless they're definitely hiding on the other side or you know poop or just ruts or different things that they would, they would leave. So no evidence of them here on the island. Ooh, monarchs. Asters and goldenrods. Ooh, look at this raspberry bush. Look at you. Yummy. I found the tree on the island. Look how windswept that is. I feel like I'm about to walk into a deep, deep section. Let's see if I can go this way. I thought this side would be way easier to explore than the rocky craggy bit, but the footing is so unstable and there's deep holes and the grass is just covering it up. And before you know it, you sink man boob deep into grass that I think I'm gonna make my way back around and try to get to the other end of the island. Wish me luck. One of the um, kayaking tips that I've been playing with this summer is waterproof socks. And what I used to hate doing is taking sneakers and packing wet sneakers in my, in my kayak or like, making room for those gross smelly sneakers. And then if it would rain, the sneakers would be wet and it just turned into a mess. So what I was working on this summer and have loved is taking waterproof socks. And when I'm around camp, I just put my slides on. If they're light, they fit easily into my boat. They're comfortable, easy to get out in the middle of the night and take a pee with slides on. So take slides and have those in waterproof socks or use my paddle shoes as sneakers. Like all this hiking around I'm doing today, my waterproof socks and my, um, my, my waterproof or I guess not, not waterproof, but my, uh, this, the sneakers, the, the shoes that I would wear over my dry suit. So that's been a bit of a game changer for me. 
you know, level 10 kayaking tips. So, um, yeah, try that out. Tell me what you think. Okay, went back to camp, and now I'm headed the other way to see if I can get up this hill with a little bit more ease than what I was tromping through on the other side. Looks a little bit better. We'll see. Much easier than the other side so far. In addition to my waterproof sock tip, the other thing I might offer that I focused on this year to try to make things a little bit easier for myself is smaller dry bags. I feel like I've invested a small fortune this summer in dry bags, but I just had too many big dry bags and they were just too hard to fit into, into the kayak. And then if you get a lot in a dry bag, you spend your day going in and out of a dry bag searching for something that's like buried in the bottom. So definitely shifted to a lot of small dry bags in the past couple trips and have had a lot of success with that. Hi guys. Yay, we made it, top of the hill. It's the highest point on the island and you get a good view. I was trying to come up that way and that wasn't happening. <laughs> I think you might be able to see the tree. Uh, where is it? The tree's over here somewhere, over here somewhere. And that sucked trying to come this way. So I just made my way back to the tent, which you can't really see. It's kind of down there a bit and up this hill. Here we are. The view from Ram Island. These places are so ridiculously beautiful. And, you know, we're not that far from town, but far enough that it just feels like we're on the edge of the world. And I love that about kayak camping. Out of all the types of kayaking I do, kayak camping is the thing that I, all the other bits focus on. The reason I love playing in, in rocks, I mean, it's exhilarating, it's fun, but if I needed to explore something or get to an island, I want those skills. Or if I needed to land in surf, um, am I comfortable with my surfing skills? And yeah, on their own, they're all fun. And I love doing all of those things separately, but kayak camping, holy smokes, to be able to get yourself to these edge of the world places. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty spectacular. Hmm. Yeah, and then to spend a night on this place, to feel its energy, to settle in. I didn't talk about it on the way out, but another thing I love about kayak camping is that it lets you get further out or it lets you see things. So we came to this island earlier this year. It was a long paddle. We left from a different spot. We should have left from the spot I left from today. It's much closer. But, you know, you get here and then you got to get back and that's a full day. But today I just had to get here, which is a relatively moderate day. And then I had a ton of time to explore the island. I would have never had that time if I had to get back. I wouldn't have had the time to really settle in. I love that. I love that about kayak camping. I love that ability to have a little bit more time and a little bit more spaciousness. And I also love, you know, reading in the tent at night or sitting, watching the sunset. Like those are, those are things that uh, are also nourishing and also fun that I look forward to as part of the whole package. I um, 
did a little like, hey, we're back from the around the island, and wasn't that amazing? And let's do a little tent exploration, but I forgot to press record. So <laughs> you didn't see any of it. So this is my Southern Cross One. Let me set this down. So I'm gonna have to unzip. And that is gonna be unruly for you. Terra Nova Southern Cross One, kind of a one and a quarter person tent. Definitely cozy for one person with a little bit of extra room. Um, it's not gonna win any awards for uh, best tent to get changed in or most roomy tent experience, but I feel like it's, um, it's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a, a lightweight, well-built, completely freestanding. You don't have to guy corners out. Sometimes um, you know, the poles don't cover the corners and you're gonna guy out the corners. And I didn't want that. I wanted something that was, the structure was held by the tent poles. And I wanted something three or four seasons. So as I extend the season, uh, I, I'm, I'm cozy in it. I'm not, I'm not wishing I was home or wishing I had three more sleeping bags. So I expected it to be about 55 degrees tonight. So I brought this in a quilt and I think I'll be, I think I'll be quite cozy. So it's going down and I need to sort out dinner before it gets too late. So let's go make dinner. Noodle soup is cooking away. Beef sand, I just tossed the broccoli in. It is gonna be a bit of a scramble here to eat, but say la vie. Okay, noodle soup is done. I was lazy and I didn't bring a bowl to eat the noodle soup out of, so I'm just going to eat it in the pot. I need to let the pot cool down, so. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy a little appetizer of olives, cheese, and crackers. I, uh, I like bringing nerdy Maine Coast themed beer along with me when I come to do my kayaking adventures. And I found, uh, found something interesting. Let's we'll see how this goes. I, uh, I like the brewery. It's from Fogtown Brewing. Look at that can, look at that artwork. This is uh, aquaculture. It is uh, brewed in Maine with Maine grown barley, wheat, and hops. And it's finished with oysters from Deer Isle Oyster Company. So it's oyster beer, I guess. Or it's got oysters in it. Here we go, let's see what we think. Delicious. It's very smooth. There's nothing in it that would make me think of oysters. Very smooth. And look at that artwork. Look what they did. Catching that in the sunlight. Good job, Fogtown. Cheers. I'm in the post olive and cheese pre noodles because they're still cooling phase. I just packed up the boat. I just took a little time to pack up everything in the boat. So everything. You know, my paddling clothing, I dried out today, it's in there. Hatches are closed. This rock seemed like a pain in the ass. It's even too big for me to get into frame. This rock seemed like a pain in the ass to try to get my, my tow line around. So there's a rock over there that I just wrap my tow line around the base of the rock. Tonight's high tide is about eight, 10 inches higher. So this was last night's high tide line. I'm sorry, not last night's high tide line. The last high tide line was where that seaweed is. So it'll be up a little bit further. It's a pretty steep beach, so probably be about where that buoy is uh, in the next high tide. So nice and dry there. Okay, noodle soup. Heck yeah, noodle soup. Let's see how ridiculously hot this pot is. I have a slight addiction to noodles. Bowl of noodles, cold day, or a remote island. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right, I'm gonna like cut to some music here so you don't hear me slurping noodles.
A team, so everything is wrapped up and buttoned up for the night. I was enjoying a little bit of sunset, but it's cooling off and the bugs are getting gnarly. And I think I've used about a quart of bug spray so far. <laughs> um, I also have a stupid early morning tomorrow. In order to make this work, um, I, I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> this time frame for this weather window on this trip made it so that tomorrow's a work day. So I've got a lot to do tomorrow morning of packing up camp, getting out of here, paddling back, loading the boat, getting back home <laughs> and, and getting to work. So because of that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crawl into the tent. We'll do a little bit of reading and maybe listen to a podcast and just kind of unwind in the tent. So far the trip is going great. Beautiful day out. It was lovely getting here. I wanted to get here about two o'clock this afternoon. I got here a little bit before that. Plenty of time to explore. I think I spent a little bit too much time exploring the island and walking around the island and getting my, you know, doing some video stuff and talking to you all that by the time I thought about dinner, the sun was making a beeline for the horizon. So that felt a little bit rushed. Such a beautiful evening, beautiful colors. The sunset was lovely to watch. The air is cooling off a bit. We've got the sound of the surf. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty good night's sleep. So I hope you enjoyed today and I will see you tomorrow. It's gonna be a bit of a working breakfast this morning. I made the coffee, which was important. Uh, but I'm going to take some time to load the boats and get stuff ready just to, get, just to try to get caught up on time. This won't be a sit and enjoy the ocean morning. Everything's down from the tent platform and down at this level at the beach. I'm going to organize some stuff in bags in the boat and then haul some bags down, haul a boat down, get packed up and go. I'm ready to shove off and head back to the launch. See you on the water. Noticing it yesterday when uh, I was walking around and getting organized that this beach doesn't have as much dumpy wave action at lower tide. That the shape of the beach closer to high tide really creates those dumping waves that we were navigating on the way in yesterday. I'm glad this weather system forced a change in our plans. We definitely are on the better side of this system here than when I first planned this trip a couple of days ago. Man, that continuation bias, getting the car packed up and the, you know, the gear organized and shopping the day before for broccoli for my noodle soup, like all of the stuff that goes into it, it's just such a, it's such a commitment and then to, get up and the commitment of Wendy to take me to the launch that morning, which wasn't close, uh, to get there and just see what the water was actually doing, stronger than forecasted, stronger than predicted. I could do this, but is this gonna be fun for me? But yeah, a lot of, a lot of inertia and continuation bias to get over that point, to get over that hump. It's interesting how those unexpected changes can actually result in a better experience. I guess we just got to be open for them, right? We got to be, we got to be listening, and we got to be open, and we got to be honest with ourselves, and not, not just stuck in the. I plan this trip. I got to do this trip. This is a new format for me on this channel. I haven't done a camping episode. And I thought about it a lot before I did it, and it always had been the plan to in include some kayak camping, but time just hasn't allowed me to, to get out to do a kayak camping trip. So I'm glad I was able to do it. What did you think? What do you think of this format? What do you think of uh, adding this to the channel? Do you want to see more of this? What would you want to see as I do more kayak camping and show you? So chuck those in the comments and in the comments as well. Share your ideas about loading a kayak. I shared some principles. What are your tips or tricks or principles you follow? 
I need to make a bit of a sprint here over this last little stretch to get to where I need to be at a time I need to be there. So I'm gonna make this sprint. And as I do that, I'm not really gonna have the breath to paddle to, to talk to you. I'm gonna be huffing and puffing and focusing on, on paddling as I go here. So we're gonna close this one out here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you uh, took something out of it. I hope that I was able to share a little bit something of the magic of that island in this place with you. I also hope that you enjoy your adventures, whatever they are. All right, everybody, until next time, safe paddling. Bye-bye.